Hello everybody and welcome again to another painting guide video. So today we're going to be painting the new Legions Imperialis Civitas Imperialis City Road tiles. Really do like these kits. I think that they're fantastic. Wouldn't mind seeing some more of them, some different shapes and maybe even a different road set, like a bend in the road, car park or something, but who knows. In this you get a uh, two of each, so you get two T junctions, uh, two straights and two crossroads. Now let's turn it over and have a little look at the uh, paints that they used or they recommend. So Mechanicum Standard Grey, which I'm guessing they'd like to, us to use for the actual road itself. Lead Belcher and some other greys. So yeah, it's pretty good. I do love the weathering around the actual, uh, well, between the tiles, as you can see. I think that does look really sharp on this. And you can see they've kind of done it with a mottled effect. So it could be sponges they used for this. Or similar, I think in a few places you can actually see they've done like a little black spray of airbrush to add a bit of um, like explosion, well, sorry, a bit of soot around the explosions. So um, I'm not going to do them in this video because it's, yeah, everyone knows how to do that with a bit of an airbrush. So we'll do that later. Uh, but the dust inside the crevices and the cracks, they look, that does look pretty cool. And I think I'm going to try that, well, I'll try that out and I'll try it with, um, uh, weathering powders and also try it out with a bit of a thinned down paint as well to see how it looks. So let's get the cover off and have a look at the tiles inside. So here we have a nice straight tile to start off with. Some really good detail in there. A few like depressions and indentations on the road itself. Quite a few cracks. Then all the way around the outside you can see a big circle, can't you? Now that must be like one of those... Um, supports on the underside to make sure it doesn't bend or flex that much let's just hope it disappears by the time we paint it so that would be quite unsightly otherwise but the detail on the tiles is just brilliant like that manhole cover there in the middle of the road looks great it's got a little surface water channel for runoff from the road it's got ring holes in the center of the wider part of the footpath to access underground utilities or ducts underneath so it makes a lot of sense and it looks great so on to the painting. All right, to start with, I decided to try out the Mechanica Standard Grey to see how that would look on the road. Um, I found it looks a bit different to the actual box itself. So it's it's more for your reference only that I won't be using it. And I'm going to go for a bit of a darker color instead. So the Mechanica Standard Grey was a really good undercoat for it, but the Dark Reaper is the layer which I'll be using for the road. And there we have it, a Dark Reaper road and it looks very similar to the colors on the box art as well. And it's worth noting at this stage that I will be adding oils and all these other colors a bit later, as so it will darken it tremendously. So it's always good to come from a lighter color as you go darker. And then we get some masking tape, wider the better in this case, and it's gonna cover the road from one side to the other. Make sure you push it down in the channels. And so at this stage, it's probably worth me showing you the buildings that I'm going to be adding to my set in the future. Now, my buildings, as you can see, are very light. So I've got to choose quite a dark, light, concrete colour to sort of complement them. The ones on the front cover of the actual box would probably make them feel a bit lost. It's a very light grey that they use, uh, like grey sear. But that's not what I'll be using. Because as you can see, my buildings are a bit darker, a bit more sepia as well. So the next colour we'll be using is Zandri Dust straight from the can. Just rattle that all over. As you can see, I've not given it the thickest coat because it doesn't really need it because the airbrush layers, which I'll be putting on in a second, will sort of bring it up. The next bit I'll be doing off camera, but I'll be airbrushing Vallejo Model Air Concrete all over, followed by Cold Grey, which will be going in the centre of all the panels. So here it is off the back of the concrete colour. Now it's a very decent colour. I Purposely not giving it a solid finish, just so there's a bit more like uh, Zandri dust showing through here and there. And here it is after the cold grey. So as you can see, I've deliberately not gone to the edges or where the join lines are. Left a bit of the concrete colour underneath show through. At this point here, it's worth me showing what a building looks like on top of it. You can see it's quite bright still. But that's because I'm going to be taking the uh, colour all the way down. And it's going to be a lot darker. So let's strip off the masking tape. And look, 
unfortunately I've got a small bit of Zandri dust through, but oh well, the weathering will take care of that a bit later, I'm sure. All right, the next thing I want to do is sponge on some Rakar flesh just to break it up and add a bit more detail onto the concrete. So here's my little mixing palette and a very torn kitchen sponge. And then you're going to sponge it all across the board after testing on something like your hand to make sure you're not getting too much off. And this is the sort of finished result you're after. Not too much, but just enough. Then we're going to be painting Scaven Blight Dinge right into the recesses along the drainage channels. Just a standard brush for this will work well. And when that's done, we're going to be moving on to the ironwork. And for that, I use a mixture of triad bark, uh, warp block bronze, or in this case, tinny tin, and the bad and black. And straight after this, I'm going to be going on to some road markings. I have taken the step to actually add a white line directly in the centre of the road. And when you've found the dead centre of the road, make sure you mark it up with a pencil. And then we get out our masking tape, the really thin stuff you can get from model shops for you know, chevrons and the like. And then we're going to choose a nice white, something like this, or ceramite white's fine. And we are going to sponge it along the road, or in this case, stipple it. So I also wanted to add some yellow lines here and there across the model. So I made a, a nice little thin mixture of Avalon Sunset and water. Don't need Lamy and Medium or anything like that for this. And just started stippling it along in nice little lines across the edges of maybe a tile or a paving slab. At the end of the day, whenever you go to a city, you always see yellow markings on the floor. So why not just add some to our little city? And there we have it, a nice little yellow hatch. It's always quite nice to sort of stipple it on because it kind of gives it a worn look. So as you can see, got it there and also got some double yellow line markings there for the sake of it. See them in London. So we're going to peel that off and straight away, it's probably a good idea to hang it over something so you can reuse it for the next step, which is more lines, because you can't get enough of it. And as you can see here, we've already started the yellow stippling. So this is a lot easier to get this in line than compared to the center of the road. So just line up with some of the um, locking bits on the corner of the road tile squares. And yeah, and just sponge it along. Now, I got this sponge tool a while ago, and I can't remember where I got it from, but it's pretty cool. I think it's a, a weathering sponge, that's what it is, on a stick. It works really well. You get to pull it out, stab it down, and feel it like a pen. And when that's done, peel it off and just slap it straight on the other side. And here it is with both yellow lines done. I just could not wait to get some models on the board. Alright, then after that we're going to be sealing the detail we just painted. And for that we're going to be using a multi-surface wax, in this case Pledge. It used to be called Clear until I think Pledge bought it out or whatever. But this is what we're using and it works really well. I use it for most things I do nowadays. So we'll be doing two coats of it. Do one first and then allow it to dry then wait. Yeah, then just reapply it again straight over the top of the other one in this case i'm being quite lazy i couldn't bother to put it through the airbrush so i'm just painting it on with a nice um hobby brush that kids used to use and it goes on really nicely settles really well and levels out almost automatically as well so there's no brush marks a lot of people use it to finish off models as well um you know instead of applying some sort of air varnish because it does mostly the same thing And while the tiles are drying, we're going to be making our oil paint mixture up. Now this will be raw umber, well not raw umber, it's burnt umber, my bad. Burnt umber and lamp black. So just a little bit of each in the bottom of a any sort of mixing tray. In this case, I'm using an old takeaway tub. It's just nice and easy and you can swirl the white spirits around quite well. 
See, I'm really happy just with the standard low odor um, white spirits, which you can get from any sort of like hardware store. And all we're going to do is add a small little dab of that into here. Oh, also, as you can see, I'm wearing gloves and I've also prepared the area very, very carefully because you obviously don't want to get this splashing everywhere. And then we're just going to mix this into a very nice thin paste. And it's going to be a bit like a, a bit of a, a very cheap gravy. So not a, not a nice thick gravy that you like on your roast dinners, but just a, a thin, very thin, horrible gravy. A depressing gravy. The sort of gravy that if you serve, you send it back. And here we go. So when it's all nice and runny still, as you can see it's sloshing around a bit, we're then going to paste it all over this tile. And action. All up and down, nice old brush, preferably synthetic because I think they last a bit longer with these oh, with white spirits and this sort of mixture. Yep, so you can clean it after, adding lots more white spirits to it. Well, the brush that is not the actual surface. There you go, as you can see, just pasting it on nicely, all over. And there it is, completely covered and soaking wet. Now it does take a while to dry, not not too long, but long enough. And you can speed this up by using a hairdryer or a heat gun. But uh, if you're going to use either of them, make sure you take it to a point where it, it's still slightly tacky, but not solidly dry. You'll kind of get used to it quite easily. It is forgiving, even if it is really, really dry. And here it is when it is mostly dry. You can still see there's a little bit of wet patches here and there, but not too much of an issue. All right, we're going to grab a old t-shirt, something all torn, and we're going to go to town on it and try to buff off as much of this as possible. Okay, so what you want to do is rub it in small circular motions and every now and again, just change the t-shirt off a bit or the bit of cotton you've got, the rag, and uh, just keep buffing and buffing and buffing until you're happy. And obviously the more you buff, the more you get off. You can do big sweeps to get a big initial layer off, which does help. There you go, as you can see. And then, just be quite reactive and you'll kind of get to a point where you kind of know what you've got to do and uh, how much you have to swap that rag round, refresh the bit you're using. And then if you skim over the broken bits, you get a nice little shadow in the recesses. Try to take it almost up to the edge of the um, join lines because obviously that's where a lot of the dirt and grime normally builds up anyway. So you want to try to keep that there. And then you can also do it on the road. Just keep rubbing, leave some splotches here and there, just add a bit of texture. Breaks up the monotony of the same big open area. And you can use your finger wrapped in the rag to target the smaller detailed squares like the paving slabs. If you really want to, you can use um, cotton wool buds and the like as well. And here we are. So this is the result I was looking for, actually. So I'm really happy with it. Now, um, there's a few areas obviously we couldn't reach with our cloth rag. So we're going to be targeting those areas either with thin old brushes loaded up with white spirits, you know, the odorless stuff, or um, cotton wool buds. They both work very well. It's mainly the drainage channel, which is the problem here. But as to be honest, most grime ends up in the drainage channel anyway, it doesn't really matter how much you sort of take out of there. And then when everything's dry, we're going to hit it with Munitorum Varnish. Just make sure it gives it a lovely satin feel. Also stops the oil buff rubbing off even more onto your clothes and everything else. After that, I decided to add a little bit of MIG weathering powder and the colour I use is Gulf War sand. So I stippled that into a few recesses here and there. You can use your finger just to sort of wipe off certain bits, help it go into the recesses. Now the problem with you know these powders is sometimes they don't always um, set very well. So 
what I like to do is take them into, uh, let's say, a bathroom with me while I'm having a shower. Don't take them to the shower with me, but I will actually just put it inside the room so the steam in the air will help it set and uh, fix better. I never seem to get on really well with the pigment fixers because they just seem to stain or create tide lines. Yeah, the alternative is a nice thin Zandri dust. So we made that a little mixture up over there. And we are going to use a fine detail brush to go straight into the recesses. And add a bit more water just to thin it out a bit more. But you can sort of pin wash it right into the areas where you want it to look like dust has built up. And so here's the finished tile. I've got my blood angels coming down the street. And either side I've got two of my buildings. I'm very happy how the uh, colours complement each other. And so now all I've got to do is paint the rest of the tiles. Oh, there's a lot of them. Okay, well, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please leave them below in the uh, comments. And if you really enjoyed it, like and subscribe. See you next time.